can't explain how the wind touches you, how the vitalness from the dogs affects you, how the smells are, how the view is. All of that you have to experience in order to feel. My name is uh, Brage Jäger. I'm from Alta, from Holmen. Been living here most of my life. Moved away, came back. Me and my sister have always been saying, someday we gotta do the Finnmark race, because we, we grew up in it. So my mom was one of two women who did it for the first time, uh, where they both completed. And uh, my dad, he started the race 15 times and won it three times. I'm now uh, on the path of, you could say, both my parents' old path of uh, trying to compete with sled dogs. And the big goal is the Finnmark race. Last time the race went, the fastest did it in two days and 17 hours. So if I get in under three days, it's good. That means you're doing an average above 200 kilometers per day. What they're communicating? Excitement, I think. They want to go. And normally they're quiet all the way till I start putting them on my jacket and stuff. Because they've learned that yeah, sucking take, takes time. So now they know it's go time. I think I ha had the first realization of like how complex it is to motivate a team of dogs through those tough races when I had the first proper practice race I did myself. I had to talk with my dad after this first time and this is when he told me there's dog sledding and there's the craftsmanship of dog sledding. So you can get equipment, you can get dogs, you can get food, Every everyone can do that. But the craftsmanship of dog sledding is how can you motivate these strong individuals when you are tired, when they are tired. Just uh, tying up the socks again. We've been going through some uh, snow that makes them fall down a bit. And this guy has his wolf claw. Then it's extra, extra tricky. See, they slip down on some dogs. But, like the forecast said, blowing wind, sun. It doesn't get much better than this. They're on their second day of rest and uh, we normally rest them a couple of days when we've done the long runs but they could easily run today. That's so much en energy here. Well this is something we do every rest day and also after running they run loose together. Hey James, you okay? Eh? 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 There you go. I've spent over 10,000 kilometers with them now, and that's just the running. 
Also, there's countless hours of free runs, of feeding, of cleaning, of transport. And I really feel I have a connection with every single one of them. Come in! Oh, so flink! And this is Robin, and he is, uh, he comes when he wants. He doesn't come that often, but when he comes, then he really wants to socialize. And this is his brother, Ronaldo, and he's my main lead dog. <laughs> You're joking. Hmm? Hey. He's, uh, yeah, the most important in the team at the moment. Oh. Sort of the lead dogs, you have the happy-go-lucky and you have the followers and you need every single one. But the ones in the front, they are taking more responsibility and it's easy to take responsibility on a sunny day with made trails and full battery. But who takes responsibility when you are heading into the night? It's your third night, you have headwinds, you can barely see the trail. But yeah, now we're gonna get a straw. <clears throat> this will be what I'm gonna do at the checkpoint. Give out some straw to each dog. After that, I'm gonna give them uh, food. First straw. Oh, it's a link, eh? Hey, hey. Yep. No sort of serving. It's a good team, I think. But the thing is, it can be a good team at home, but I haven't seen the other teams. I have so much luck. Like uh, five top five teams are just as good as, uh, like the dogs are just as good as the other ones. You think you are making a good training program, and you think you have good quality on your training, but the answers you get in the race, like how good are they, and how good am I? And uh, I'm a pure rookie. I've only done one race before. Hello. Hello. Can you tell me when it was? How long it was? How was it? The first moment was just stress, and then we were out. And it was really hard trails. You could go so fast if you wanted to. But then I, like, I knew, like, I'm not going to go faster than I'm training. Like, we'll do the pace that I'm training at normally. And then I had teams flying by me. And I thought, how, like, how can you do this this early? You're going you're gonna to beat up the dogs. And then we went on the first long run. 100 kilometers, and it was probably the prettiest run I've done these two years. And then we were on the river, and I could, I could feel, I could see the dogs are still full of energy. And we just done 80 kilometers. We only had 20 left to a checkpoint.
good. Go rough. Go Olivia. Go rough. Go rough. Go rough. Thanks, Olivia. Go rough. Go rough. Go rough. Five hour rest there after doing first 100 and five hour rest and then 130 and then five hour rest. And then we were supposed to do an 85 kilometer run on the river. And this is known for being the most exhausting run because it's just river, 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 river. You feel you're going in, in a tunnel, it's not, you see the same all the time. It's just this river. But midway through that run, the dogs were barking, I could feel the enthusiasm. You could feel that there was still a lot of power left. And then it became real that team is good. And then I was thinking through everything we have been doing to make them that good with these two years. And I was, yeah, I was crying for, I think, two hours straight. And it was crying from sadness, it wasn't happiness, it was just pure gratefulness. Because I had questions during the race, like, is it, is it worth it to put so much time into this? To sacrifice all the time with friends, sacrifice all their hobbies, or just free time in general. Uh, but after that moment of just, those, yeah, those two hours where it just, uh, the most, most pure moment I've ever, ever I've been in. And, could really like you could just feel that everything was right and you could almost sense that the dogs felt the same Checkpoint is so short, so it's just get some food, chill a bit, then suck the dogs and go again. Yotka, which is a wilderness checkpoint, and there I came in and I was third. Like I see on the list, you check in on it's only two names before me, and it becomes more and more real that all right, we're gonna we're gonna be able to finish the race, but also we're gonna be able to finish it at uh, at uh, yeah, a pretty incredible position. Now I think I know how I can win. So, 
We'll see you next year.